Hey pilots, welcome aboard Plasma 1945 and we are starting up our MiG-29S on Growling Sidewinder. As you can see, I've got the fabulous MiG-29 Red Star livery here, courtesy of our livery designer Striker 45, and we're going to go for a flight here. Growling Sidewinder, Georgia Map, Caucasus, we've got two 73s Fox 2s close range, two R-77 Fox 3s medium range, one 27 ER and 127 ET. So we've got a nice collage, bouquet, or a charcuterie board of missiles to deliver to the Blue Force. As you can see, both our engines are spooled up, and keep that in mind. Although you can taxi out in a MiG 29, you must wait for both engines to be fully spooled up. All right, so when you taxi out, always make sure you look both left and right and never block the runway. The other thing is, watch that little light in the bottom left-hand corner near your knee. Once the damp light is solid, you are clear for takeoff. Until it is solid, you are not going to have all the required flight controls. And you're going to have a little bit of bumpiness. Now, what you want to do is you want to adjust your trim to pull the stick back by about 5 or 10%. And if you've got enough runway, do a non-afterburner takeoff and mill basically means you are starting at about 95-98% you don't want to kick an afterburner. The afterburner will light up as the two green lights on the right side of your indicator lights. So they'll light up if you hit afterburner. Try to avoid it because the more afterburner you put in the more gas you're going to burn and you need all the gas you could possibly handle here. Alright nose up we are going up in the air a little kiss of an afterburner there didn't quite have enough runway and we're airborne but come out of that afterburner right away so that you are not wasting your fuel press G to bring your gear up and then come out of burner and let's roll out we're at about 4600 4500 uh, kilograms of fuel and we're in a pretty good state here so let's climb up in the mill again no afterburner and uh, let's head out for a sortie if you guys had a bad takeoff, watch your afterburners. Uh, if the lights don't come up, that basically means that you're damaged. I'd recommend taking off all over again, get a new plane. Let's get back to our fight here. We're cruising, I would usually say, cruise between about 5,000 to 9,000 meters if the airspace is safe. And here we're locked up on the nose. We don't have data link. We do have TACV that I added after the fact in the top right hand corner, but we had a lock from are 12 o'clock which means I'm going to offset never fly directly at an enemy because you don't know how many of them there are and we're gonna hit the mountains here and the reason we're doing that is just in case there's anybody looking at us we're gonna break some locks missile is on me and you're gonna hear it go pitbull there it is coming in from my two o'clock I'm looking at the RWR it's not closing very quickly that's a 120 that made a sharp turn I also make a turn away from it, level my wings out, and we're watching the RWR. Those yellow bars aren't increasing, which means the missile is not gaining on me, and I can just extend nice and calmly here. I fired afterburner for a few seconds, but then I pulled back, realizing that, nope, we're okay. Now, as you can see, I requested bogey dope, but didn't get an answer. That's because in the weeds, you may not get bogey dope from your AWACS. If they can't see you, they won't help you out. I strongly recommend you guys bind bogey dope to a uh, button you can hit really quickly. It doesn't help that it's on the keyboard is a two button combination. So just a quick one button toggle, strongly recommend it because you need to get those bearings on the enemies. All right, so we're gonna make a turn here. We know we're getting uh, into the combat areas and I'm gonna ditch my fuel tank you usually drop it around uh, 3,500 kilograms. Perfect, 319 for 22. That's well within our combat range. His altitude was 4,500, I'm at 3,300, so he's a little higher than me. We're going EO, and uh, we're gonna lock him up. So looking for the target. Important thing to keep in mind here, as I lock the enemy, I'm gonna turn left, and when his circle's right in the center of the hut, I'm gonna fire the missile. Watch for it, and there's the shot just as it passed through the center. And right away I'm descending. The enemy has fired a Fox 3 on me. It's tracking. 
but by diving it has gone into the mountain. Also I tried to go to 90 degrees to try to notch it if possible. The reason I fired the missile when I had the circle in front of me in that turn is so that my missile would have saved as much energy as possible and did not need to make a sharp turn. That's another really important thing. You want to help your missiles out as much as you can. All right, we're cruising along. I've locked something. I don't know what the heck I've locked. It's something about 25 kilometers away. I'm trying to find in a beam. I don't like if there's RWR lighting up on my plane, that's probably a bad sign. So I always try to keep enemy RWR on either the left or the right side. I've definitely got a missile here. It is closing, so I peel away. Give it some afterburner. Now I'm going to level my wings out, and I'm seeing that the missile is right on top of me. Still gaining, so I'm trying to use that terrain for cover. And by going around that hill, I temporarily broke the missile's lock. And then I roll out and get away from that missile. The missile by this point is out of energy. All those little maneuvers and tweaks that I did confused the missile enough so that it lost energy, making it safe for me to survive because that was a pretty close shot. But that's the other thing is if you know which direction the enemies are, or if you're picking up their RWR, never fly directly at them. All right, flying through the weeds, heading for Vladikavkaz, and here's another important factor. Use your eyeballs. So here, you can't see it, but I was actually looking around in VR, and right above me I saw two contrails. So I'm staying low, I'm gonna pull up at the last second. Missile's already been launched at me. Lock him and fire an ET, continuing over the top, and afterburner, and start popping chaff. His first missile passes over me, and the second missile hits the mountain, so there we go, splash two. I shot at the trailer so that the front guy wouldn't see me, right? Because which one is you want to let one guy go by, and then shoot the guy in the back. All right, Fox 1, 2070R. This guy was pretty far, and he was quick. Now watch the left bar there. Watch those solid bobs. That's the minimum range and the no escape range. By maneuvering and descending, this guy got himself killed. If he just maintained course and kept the same speed, my missile would have never reached him. But by firing that Fox 1, I spooked him, and he actually slowed down enough that he got into the missile. So remember, your Fox 1s and your radar will scare the heck out of an enemy. All right, the other important thing, know when to go home. That's really important. In this case, I should have gone home. I've got plenty of fuel to get home, even an afterburner, and that's what I should have done. But hey, I've got a hostile on my nose that I picked up, locked him up. He is at about 25, 30 kilometers. Perfect, right? He's a bit above me, so I climb up for a nice shot. I've still got a R77. Well, why wouldn't I shoot him, right? All right. Fox 3, he's already fired a missile on me, and I've got an F-18 right behind me that's also firing missiles on me. That's my main nemesis, not the guy in front of me. The other F-18 that I was shooting at has already split S, and he's getting out of there. My missile's never going to get him, but now I'm in a bad place. My only hope is to find this guy that's shooting missiles at me. As you can see on TACV, he fired a second missile on me. I come around the corner, I'm looking for him. And guess what? There's a third guy coming in. This is bad. I pass right in front of him. The guy from the front locks me up, distracts me. The guy on my tail fires a missile at me, just flies right by, blows up next to me. I spot him by looking back in VR here, but it's too late. I popped flares, but I am out of here. Aim 9x to the butt and plasma 1945 is down. The important thing, guys, know when to go home. I should have gone home and landed. Well, as a consolation prize, I get to uh, look down on the majesty of... Uh, actually, this would be southern Russia. 
as I come down on the parachute. Uh, maybe I can go fishing in that. Is that a stream or a road? That looks like a road. Maybe I can walk to that road and pick up a taxi and uh, hitch a ride back to my base. All right, guys. Plasma 1945 landing in the bushes. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. And check out the videos at the end here for other ideas for MiG-29s. Plasma 1945 out.